team fight on Team Secret. You know, Monkey King ult into a Sand King stun and Witch Doctor to keep him in there as well. It is nice, but LGD looks like they could just blow people up right now. That is going to be a lot of damage coming out. And really, your only heals and saves is Witch Doctor's awful healing. So, oh, you disagree, Gons? You think they got enough to sustain uh, LGD's lineup? I mean, I'm liking LGD's draft a lot more right now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Band is definitely guaranteed yeah. with the Oracle. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Can't do that. What about Huskar, though, huh? <laughs> Bring him back out from the basement? Teams have proposed it. Yeah, I'm just not. <laughs> I, I think if you're picking Husker, it's like to destroy a mid matchup. Mm. And even that, I don't think he's actually a mid lane dominator it's like he once was. So. Yeah. Especially against a Monkey King. I actually don't know. I think Monkey King almost wins that, maybe. Yeah. Level one. Yeah, level one. Yeah, yeah. Until you get a few points in those burning spears. Right. PSG Although, I guess uh, Inner Fire, the disarm, could be pretty irritating for a Monkey King. Yep. But uh, Medusa Band, I think, recognizing that secret. Monkey King's not that guy that's going to carry this game. They need uh, that big Nisha carry, whether it's the Morphling, which LGD are not afraid of. They've got so much magic damage, burst potential from the Shaker, who can bleak Echo, Last track that uh, they actually have heroes decently equipped to pressure a Morphling. Oh, I have an idea. Team Secret, would this be a good anti-mage game? Last track, very mana dependent, so is Earthshaker. We're going to be seeing a lot of that. Good ways out. Depending on the carry matchup. They they don't know what LGD is picking yet. Mm -hmm. um, if LGD get a hero that AM matches up well against, then sure. But if they pick like a Terror Blade, then no. <laughs> and you're playing AM into a Core Nature's Prophet, who's one of the strongest laning three positions in the game. And that's... Uh, yeah. The AMs we've seen have a lot of success this term. I think they were like undefeated, someone was telling me. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's Six very now. strong. Uh, um, yeah. But the thing with AM is you pick it when it's a good AM right. game. You pick it when you can't win. <laughs> yeah. So you're not going to pick AM in a bad AM game. So it's a hero that should have a high win rate. Mm -hmm. um, Secret. And should be picked in good games. Morphling. Makes sense to me. And uh, there we go. Morphling has been picked up. Huh. What do they want now? I mean, it could be... Uh, Morphling makes it slightly more okay AM game because the pace is slowed down a bit, but I think I'd rather see, like, a Terror Blade for Nisha. Yeah, we have seen them rock that one before and uh, have some people that it could blow up before they get Ten their seconds. essential skills mm. off. Uh, anything you think in Tsunami for that last snipe? They're kind of lacking in push, and I think they have run Arc Warden on Nisha. I'm Ooh, not... that's that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Arc Warden, that's correct, sir. Could be pretty good. I'm not a fan of the hero, personally, but in this situation, I think it's pretty strong. Mm. Any reason why you're not a fan? I, I think anytime you win with an Arc Warden, you would have won with, like, 90% of other carries, but oh. end up going for that anti-mage. Hey! We sniped it! Got him! Alright, so the anti-mage is picked up. Makes a lot of sense to me. I mean, having the ability to jump on top of that oracle, make sure that Lashrak gets punished. Hmm. Gentlemen, what are you thinking about these? It also allows you to just not also take the, you know, 5v5 fights where LGD just set themselves up where carries are in front, Oracle position behind where you can't get to him. AM can split push. He can just split the map a lot better, uh -huh. keep up and farm. And like you say, blink on the back lines when those fights do happen. If Oracle ever does get a position, AM's found himself a good target to go on. So, Absolutely. Uh, I, think it's a, I think it's a good pick for Secret. I still would slightly give LGD an edge with their draft, though. All right. Um... I, I think I'm inclined to agree. Uh, even though Anti-Mage has had theoretically an unbeatable track record at this tournament, I think this will probably be the, the biggest test for the hero in terms of draft. And this is probably the most even draft between the two teams that we've seen throughout the series, mainly because there's no Pudge cheese going on, stuff like that. But it's a, it's a typical Tier 1 draft, yep. I, but I'm leaning towards LGD. All right. Well, the time has come. Team Secret has gone undefeated so far. This last game was their first lost game, but it could be their first lost series. We will find out very soon. Let's go ahead and bring in our top tier casters. We've got Blitz and Cap. Prepare for battle. Just what we wanted to see. Team Secret versus LGD. Game 3. 
We'll see whether or not it's going to be an even game because game one was certainly one-sided to Team Secret's favor. Game two to LGD. So, Blitz, are we going to have an even game? How do you feel about the draft? Uh, let me see. I think I prefer LGD's draft. Again, I'm not like sure. I think this draft is much closer. Like the panel agreed. Like I thought both drafts uh, were pretty one-sided once we saw them. Yeah. Me and Cap usually just like watch from behind and we give each other our thoughts and we're pretty correct on both. But this one I think is probably the closest draft or at least the one that'll, that should theoretically be close. How do you feel about the anime last pick? Against Slash, against Furion, against Morphling. That's a lot of good heroes for an anime, right? I don't think the uh, Morph AM one is as one-sided. Not not <clears throat> as much as it used to be right now. Yeah. It's like... Before it was like, if you picked Anti-Mage against Morph, it was like 80-20 loss. Yeah. Now I think it's still very good for AM, which is why they picked it last, because obviously you morph into Morph himself. Or, uh, like, you can morph into Anti-Mage, but it's not like that begins. bad. Yeah. Because you become a melee hero now. And Morph may not be as dependent as he once was on mana. Still kind of needs it. Yeah. And then on top of that, it's, it's the classic Animage versus Spectre timing, right? It's like your Animage is going to get four items and your Morph is only going to be at two. Shout out, by the way, to our both of our observers, JJ and Caro. Done a good job making sure that we look competent. In our job. I was going to say good, but I figure confident would be a little bit more fair. Yeah. Casting with a good OBS is actually so easy. Oh, as maybe. So we switched up the lanes. Animage, just like. Um, just like. Was that VP versus Liquid? Wait, what game was it that we had a mid uh, AM that just destroyed Ember Spirit? It was uh, Liquid versus Keen game. Liquid versus Keen. Just like Liquid did, uh, Secret are going to do that here. But the matchup's not that easy. I'm presuming against Leshrac, you don't get the free win that you had against Ember Spirit. No, previously. there's a lot more ways for Leshrac to actually fight. Like, anti mage doesn't like to get hit three times for free. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And uh, <clears throat> I really like that. Maybe also has decided to go for the Lightning. Because, I mean, is Edict really going to do much against Am? Because uh, Nisha almost actually died there. Like, if he copped a stun in two hits. The lightning damage is still really low, and it does mean you won't have Edict when it comes to pushing the towers. Yeah, but that's okay too, because if you just bully the AM out, like that's the that's the point of this lane, right? You saw mm. Ami originally start heading here. Yeah. And then Look he's at like, Nisha. Wait, he's no. just trapped right now, so he's got to get a little low. But we're still looking for another Fisher and his stun that could finish off Nisha. That's why Yapser is going to come in. He needs Rescue his carry player. He needs to solve really badly. The courier will be able to deliver us. Uh, it never uh, feels good to be able to just uh, be forced into buying regen nonstop yeah. as your net worth. So that's exactly what they're going to try. Again, I'm going to do is it's actually going to pop the tango. So our top lane is the Furion matched up against uh, Puppy in mid one, the Monkey King and Witch Doctor respectively. They're going to turn around, get a Paralyzing Cast, actually bounces back to him somehow. Chalice was barely still in range, and this means he should die here to the final swing of mid one. That's going to be first blood. Oh, barely gets away. Jesus. Nisha really pushing it to the limits there. Got as much mana out of that last rack as possible. Blinks back just in time to escape death. It's not even that bad, though. Maybe he's... Doing perfectly fine. He's hit every stun. Another by the way. stun, another follow up from the Fisher, and very little Yapsor can do to stop all this harassment. <laughs> Let on me Nisha. say he's literally hit every stun on him. And Nisha's got to be careful here. He's just dead. Okay. He uh he was not careful. He was no. like, well I'm fine. Two levels of lightning at 100 HP is gonna kill you. What 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 was his build? <laughs> the AM. Does he have one one one? No. No, he's got no levels of the spell shield, so he's got no magic resistance whatsoever. He just died. He just died. Nisha, a little pissed off that he just died here, immediately blinks on to maybe tries to burn a bit of mana, make his lane easier somehow. Witch Doctor's actually going to wrap in here. So while Yapsor is keeping FY away, the Witch Doctor, Puppy's going to show up, does manage to get the Paralyzing Cast, but without any mana, maybe doesn't actually take that much damage from the right clicks of Nisha, so he will survive through this Maledict. 
He'll be a little bit low for it, though. So it looks like he's going to try and pick up that four-minute rune to refresh his bottle. If this is a regen or an arcane rune, they're so tilted. Oh, okay. well. My gratitude. They still got the rune, and they still managed to fill up the bottle. I feel like that's the, <laughs> that's the real important part for LGD. Chalice in trouble, good body blocking there from Puppy. Now follows up with a paralyzing cast. No bounces, but still with a maledict and boundless strength. Chalice is going to drop dangerously low on Alex Nova. Well, he's not going to try and stop it because he has no spells that can stop it when he's got no levels of the magic meter. Much better leaning phase from Secret this time around. Yeah. Uh, that's why last game, remember when we were watching the game, I was advocating for the monkey. Like, I feel like it fits their play style. It's one of those things... It's a hero that can transition as a core, but also, uh, you know, you, you can just fight with mid one. He's the type of player that can just go around and make plays happen. Same thing with, like, Ember Spear, right? That's why he looks so good on that same hero. Yeah. Same kind of style. At bottom. I mean, takes a little bit of damage, has to waveform back here. But he still Bounty has runes. plenty of regen to work it's with. It's time. Yeah, going to get one. Nay. Yapsor snags up one. FY can't stop Yapsor from getting the other. That'll be three. F FY had to have known that was going to happen, though. Yeah. Also, FY, because he's devoted so much time towards this mid lane, uh, is only level one so far. That is pretty crazy. It's paid off in the sense that, like, they were able to slow down the anti mage quite a bit, but, like, you know, level one eight, or uh, level one Earthshaker, anti mage will eventually catch up. Mm hmm. Good stun onto Nisha. He has hit. I think he's perfect right now. Maybe he's missed one that we were watching for a sec, but every single time that I've looked, he's hit it. I mean, he's taking a lot of harassment damage from this sinking, but he's got a big CS lead. 30 and 19 compared to the 18 and 2 of the Sand King. I think a lot of that is all that mid shenanigans pulled the supports away from being able to help out the Sand King, and Sand King are just on one on one against Morphling is not going to win that. Mid one trying to jump in is going to be able to get on top of Chalice again. This is the only real downside for LGD's lanes right now is that Chalice is suffering, dying multiple times to mid one, who's currently free farming as well, 30 and 27. Yeah, both carries are not really going to get touched. Good news for Secret, though, is that they were able to actually pick up some kills on the Monkey King, whereas uh, yeah. LGD haven't been able to do the same to Zai, who's just pulling out the side lane, farming it up with the Sandstorm. I mean, it doesn't look like you can necessarily stop that quite yet, as the sentry looks like. Fisher out, but there's going to be the paralyzing cast to be able to stop the follow-up So Look at that. They telekinesis him onto the other side of the Fisher. The same Fisher that was supposed to kill the AM helps instead to block maybe in his doom. Puppy will pick up the kill, and Nisha will head back to base for some regen. That's what it's going to take, three heroes, Then that's what you do. All like, that to try and secure Nisha his lane. I mean, your real win condition in this game is not the Monkey King. Despite him having a very good lane, it's going to yeah. be the anti-mage. Uh, the cool so thing about heroes like Am and uh, Spectre are the, like this all-encompassing hero that you know the condition lies Fish on them. Lock in. Midwan needs to be able to hide in the trees. He actually does have his ultimate, though. He'll be able to pop this now. Gets the extra armor. The turnaround. Turnaround. Also gets a boundless strike. That's going to be able to kill one support. Next, Nova is going to limp away very low. Midwan will be able to catch the other one, too. That's a double kill for him. What a big turnaround. A three against one that Midwan turns to his advantage. It was the Oracle not being able to burst him with the second level appearing in flame. Yeah. Just ends up healing him so much. 2,000 net worth lead for Team Secret. Do you feel like they tempered some of their greediness from the previous drafts? Oh yeah, for sure. And that's always like the crazy balance of being on Secret is you never know like how greedy it's gonna be. <laughs> yeah, Sor. Fisher's oh. gonna come out eventually here, or maybe not. Well, Yapsor managed to juke long enough, so instead they're gonna go for Puppy. As the Fisher block gets it pretty solidly. Puppy, no way out here. Just turn to get whatever damage he can. Mid one's actually going to jump in here. Trying to go for FY. Gets three stacks. Boundless Strike to be able to finish off that Jingu Mastery. And goes back to lane with that extra lifesteal he now has. Mm -hmm. This uh, this match, though, very important for both sides. Because whoever loses will get called garbage despite them taking games off each other. Everyone will forget about the other two games. That's my favorite part of best of threes. You know, whoever, whoever ends up winning was just right. 
don't doesn't matter what the context is. You can stomp game one like Secret did. For in the next like five days, you're gonna get called garbage, and then you eat, then you make your way all the way back through the lower bracket to beat them in the finals. What have you done for me lately? Yeah, that's my favorite. Like, I, it sounds like I'm being sarcastic, but it's not. Because that's how it should be, right? It's like, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. You don't t get to just rest on your laurels. Look at OG. You don't get to just win TI and then come back, be the most dominant uh, team in the game. That's for sure. Oh, that's good for a strike from Zai from low ground to high. Helps them get the kill secret. Just pulling a lot of numbers together. They are willing to group up it seems to be able to make these lanes go a little bit better for them. Zai now running into FY. It seems like this grouping up now rotating Zai and mid one together to bottom lane. It's working out incredibly well, getting multiple kills. Now being able to force Ame back. Ame's actually going to turn into a Sand King here. Burrow Strike gets Burrow Struck though. Turns back into a Morphling. Fights back Zai as well as mid one. Maybe it's his turnaround as Ame is going to go for it. And it does actually burst down the Monkey King. Zai is quite low. Doesn't actually get spotted inside the Sandstorm. Has to make his way out of here though. Gets hit by the stun of Ame. Followed into the trees, Zai, low on HP, low on mana, but PSG LGD are not willing to pursue. I'll take that. Seven to three, a good turnaround for LGD sort of limits the advantage that uh, Secret had, especially being able to get more bounty runes. How many bounty runes did they get? Uh, Secret picked up uh, two of them. Okay. LGD picked up two. Jeez, Puppy's still managed to get two of them. Huh? It always throws me off, like when people bottle them. Oh yeah, because there's an. It looks like it's two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, you got to pay attention. How much farm does Anti Mage have? Honestly, Not this, much. This game just comes down to like, does Nisha get a lot of farm? If yeah. so, they can win this game, no problem. Because you don't want to play against as Lushrak against an Anti Mage. With uh, they don't really have BKB piercers. Is oh. The problem. Oh. Maybe he's dead again, and you know, I said Nisha didn't have much farm, and I think that's kind of true, but maybe he has less. Yeah. He's died so many times now that his mid lane advantage that he once had has just crumpled and fallen apart. Fortunately, LGD is making the most of it, currently taking this bottom tier one tower. Their real core two, though, is more like, yeah. Like, Leshrac will put out damage no matter what. It's the same thing as Monkey King. Like, Monkey King was always going to be a really good core. Uh, just especially for a team like Secret because he needs so little to operate. Like, realistically speaking, what do you need? Uh, Diffusal, BKB, Echo Saber, and you're one of the best heroes in the game? Yeah. Uh, same thing goes for Leshrac. Like, you don't really need a ton of items to be really good in this game in particular, but uh, they're going to need to speed up the timeline a little bit because I don't think you want to go later and later into these cores that don't have natural counters. Plus, like, once they do get BKBs, it's really hard, I think, for... Wait, who wants to speed up the game? I think LGD wants to speed up uh. the game. I think that Secret are just going to keep doing the uh, mid one show, hop him around on the trees, get Bound killed. Strike, stun, X Nova, trying to get away, he's dead. Yeah, just keep doing this. This is, uh, this is what I wanted last game. I know I kept memeing with you, I was like, they need to pick Monkey King or they mm -hmm. lose. And uh, then they last picked Alk. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, is it a good Monkey King game? I was like, oh, oh no, Zai. I How you just do that to Ame. Ah, more players all deserve it. Let me just, let me just say. They're all so greedy. They're all so greedy. They're you, all greedy. You guys all want to stick around at like 50 health, like yeah. no strength. Well, sometimes that just happens. Sometimes you just die and look at that. Sometimes you just straight up get Ame dies bottom. They get a tier one top as well for secret. So you're 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 pretty convinced about this. You don't think Morphling can win this late game? Um, I kind of feel like the I, I sort of feel like the anti mage plus monkey king like, and they have a lot of disable. Yeah, it's a sick Rubik game too. Mm, he, yeah, it is. Only has good stuff to steal. Dyer's I can't believe that happened though. I love it when morphs die like that though. You know, you know who's the biggest guilty offender of this? Was oh, like I know Ramses. Say Ramses. Ramses against Alina's. <laughs> <laughs> when Ramses just farming up jungle at 500 HP and Alina shows up and just Laguna Laguna like walks away. <laughs> the one hitter. Uh, that was probably the worst performance of Ramses I think I've ever seen. Oh yeah, for sure. But now nah, it happens to every morph at some point, guys. Yes. Like it happened to Anna yesterday, where he just died to a creep. Ah, <laughs> uh, morphling. 10 to 3.
a very large kill lead and a pretty big net worth lead for Team Secret too. As this Animage has now gone into full farming mode. Mid one staying ahead despite uh, running around and being just trying to get kills. He's successfully getting those kills and his net worth continues to increase. Ames almost got Battle Fury cap. He's not that far away from it. Yeah, despite that's his, scary. Despite the fact that he just straight up got solo killed. Of course there was help from the Earthshaker earlier, but that solo death is on him. Mm -hmm. He just sort of walked around and got lightning strike and killed. It's scary because the the NEM has already climbed his way up the net worth charts through all this. That's just going to speed up exponentially once he gets the Battle Fury, then the Asha. 15 minute bounty runes are coming up. Secret. The is going to be in trouble here. Held in by X Nova's Purge and then followed up with a stun of the Lushrak. They'll use that pick off to secure the bottom bounty runes, it seems, but Zai does have his Blink Dagger. And he almost has level 2 Epicenter 2. Which is, I, I feel like, a pretty important level for Saiyan King to give him the solo kill potential. Ame actually did get the top bounty rune as well, so that's LGD grabbing 3 this time around. Excellent. Oh, he's going Maelstrom. Interesting. Oh. I mean, you can't really go Battle Fury builds. You want a Diffusal, right? I want a Diffusal. Oh, oh you're just dead, X Nova. Yeah. He's going to save himself with his ultimate, but that's. I don't think that's going to do a whole lot. The False Promise is going to wear out of it. The fire is here. real strong over his head. <laughs> yeah. There is a big push from LGD, though. Look how fast they uh, almost took down that tier 2. The Glyph starts delaying it. But it doesn't look like anybody from Secret's really going to stop this push. Puppy shows up, paralyzing Cast, but the tier 2 is still going to fall here. The rest of Secret running into the mid lane are going to be able to catch Ame here. Get the Jingu stacks up. Held him up with a telekinesis as well. Ame's been burned out of most of his mana. He pops the magic stick charges and will be able to waveform away. So Secret, they lost their bottom tier 2. The hope was that they were going to be able to get a kill mid and take the mid tower. Not possible, it seems. As PSG LGD aren't going to be able to formulate a strong defense over this mid tier one. Even if they're 2,000 net worth behind, they do have quite strong team fight. They got to watch out for Zai though. Zai with his Blink Dagger, level two epicenter. That's a lot of burst damage, especially when maybe has not had the greatest game, does not have a huge amount of stats right now, which is the Yule Scepter. The Yule is, is going to be really nice against the Sand King too. Yeah. So he can stave off some of that burst as. They're uh, smoked up, making their way right now to mid one. And if he gets Yule Scepter up, yep. Yule Scepter to lead things off, follow up with the sun. Look at that, the setup by the purge from X Nova. It does mean that, uh, okay, there goes the burst damage. Don't like, worry, they man. They were... missed a little bit of nah, it, but they were killing him. <laughs> that Wrath of Nature comes through a huge chunk of damage. And Secret, all of a sudden, only a thousand net worth ahead now. 1703 is our Battle Fury timing for Nisha. Only 14 seconds faster than the average. It's not bad, though. It's not bad. But Team Secret's also an above-average team, so it does go to show that Nisha's farm was... And look at that. Ame's... Or, uh, maybe he's number one. Well, he was for, like, two seconds. But he's still very good in net worth. Nice job. Being able to get off, uh... Magic immunity as best he can, but... In the end, it is too much for him. I do like, by the way, that Zai decided to go for the blink instead of like the tanky running you build. Yeah. I think they need catch this game. He doesn't really need uh, the ability to like tank up or anything because his anti mage is just as strong of a core to be able to follow up with him. Yeah. So he doesn't have to frontline as hard for them. Same goes with the uh, monkey. Yeah. I, I think that sometimes I feel like people blind follow builds. Like you don't always have to go for that tankier build. As bottom lane, got to be careful. But oh, FY. Mid one jumps right over the top of him. Doesn't want to go for the kill though. I think because he doesn't know where everybody is. So he's a little bit concerned and he was hopping in and out. Got vision, FYE. Correctly scared him. If you see this Earthshaker, it, it's like that thing, you know, when a uh, bear's charging at you, you hold your ground. Mm. Is that like really advice? Like I, I hope nobody actually gets in trouble because of that. 
I mean, it depends on the bear. Bruce Lee uh, bears, you uh, play dead. I see. Uh, black bears, when they charge you, they're really just bluffing, so you yeah. stand your ground. Oh, okay. Grizzly bears make oh. mean business. Ame! Gotta back up. Nisha didn't have enough burst damage. They tried it with the epicenter and Nisha jumping in, even the mana void being used, but all of it was not enough to get the kill on Ame. Apparently he learned from earlier not to put himself too far in agility. Chalice just getting some really good aggressive vision down. That's a great ward spot that he just uh, got there. That's gonna be able to spot uh, any heroes farming up Ancients. I'm not sure if PSG LGD is planning on getting aggressive soon uh, with that kind of ward. Bloodstone being worked on for maybe? Quite surprised we don't see that defusal for the monkey. Is it because he has an AM? I guess. Are you incentivized to burn mana? to get better mana voids or not burn mana so he, so he can, can do more damage. damage so that AM could do more damage. It's really Which confusing, is... right? Yeah, Because I figured Diffuser would have been perfect this game. Yeah, dude, I mean, especially with Leshrac. You're never going to burn all of Leshrac's mana. Chalice is going to be in some trouble here as he gets caught in bottom lane. X Nova tries to show up to save him, tries to get off the False Promise, but Zai was perfect with the Burrow Strike, stopped that ultimate from going off and gets the kill on the Oracle as well. I'll take that. I love it. It's just like... Uh, uh, well, okay, I have a reason. Uh, it's okay. for the Treants. Ah! Yeah, yeah. Better, better wave clear against, yeah, better wave uh, clear. Furion. Makes sense to me. But I do think Diffusal would have been sick, too. Yeah. Like, either option I think is fun here. Because you're, because realistically, like, Am is fast enough around the map that he can farm up the lanes for you. What are you trying to check out? Nothing, William. Don't talk about it. Just gotta remind myself of Oracle's terrible ass spell names. <laughs> Fates Edict! Come on, man. Oh, Zai is gonna be able to catch uh, Chalice here. The, oh, the Fisher kind of separates the two, but Chalice has already taken up too much damage. He's gonna fall here. Simultaneously, they were pushing in the bottom lane and did manage to get that tier one tower for uh, the AM as well. So Nisha got himself a pretty big bounty. Is now. 1,500 net worth ahead of the Morphling secret as a whole is 5,000 net worth up. I don't think this net worth thing gets better either. There is something about Nature's Prophet. Like, I think he is a straight-up great hero. Yeah. Uh, tier 1 for sure. But if you're behind on him, you're not team fighting as they're going to oh, go Echo Slam straight up. They're just going to blow everything they have to be able to kill mid one. He's one of the biggest team fighters. Now they can just run over the rest. His puppy's going to be caught inside the sprout. He's dead. Last second, he throws out the paralyzing cast to make sure there's not too much of a pursuit. Hold as on. his allies retreat and team Guys, secret. That was a disaster, Kev. <laughs> yeah. He hit the perfect echo inside, just whiffs on the stun. Oh, that made that fight so hard. I was about to say, like, the problem with NP is... Uh, you don't have a team fight skill set. Not right. really. This hero relies on being quite ahead. He's like a mini Alk in that regard. But if you're not ahead, you get put into these like weird positions where you know you have even net worth, but you don't actually have skills that can fight. You don't come with a stun. Your ulti is very like it's you use his it ultimate, to, like, to be fair, his ultimate is a lot better in team fights than he used. Yeah, yeah, it's for sure. Much heavier burst damage, but, but it's just not reliable. Oh, yeah, I guess is the best way to put it. You're not, you're not a hundred percent, you're not a hundred percent counting on it. Yeah, and so when you're behind with NP, then it naturally just becomes like I'm gonna rat a little bit more. Yeah. But I do like how Chalice is building this, deciding to go for the hex because he realizes like I'm a hero. I farm well, but I come with no disables or anything like that, so. Let me just try to fix that problem up real quick. And this will help catch these very, I mean, there are three mobile, hyper mobile cores, Sand King, yeah. Animage, and Monkey King. Now, they are behind this last rack, so they're gonna try and save him here. The Fisher actually keeps last rack in position. They're gonna go for the False Promise quickly onto this last rack, but there's so many secret heroes, and none of them are really dying to this magic damage. It looks like this Lesh will get blown up. Three dead from LGD. They did not bring five heroes up to that top lane, instead trying to go for a split push. And they do successfully get the mid-tier one tower off of the Furion, it looks like. Yeah, this is pretty but important, but uh, like I said, hefty, hefty cost. Fighting five on five is gonna be really hard. Yeah. The only reason why they won that fight at bottom was because uh, FY's reaction time was like the best thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. That was insane. The fact that he was able to blink through Zai's blink stun, get the echo onto the Monkey King, they burst him. But in situations like that, it's going to just look where 
AM is dominant. Witch Doctor, dead. And oh, look at that, Ame turning oh. into the Monkey King to be able to get the Boundless Strike long range onto mid one. That was a great pickup for LGD. That'll help rectify that loss earlier in that top lane, that's for sure. Question is, can you kill this anti -mage? Well, it's not going to be easy if he finishes this Scotty. Already has one of the ultimate orbs. And you give him another two minutes or so, and he will he will have that Scotty. And then, the, I mean, they're, they're so reliant on burst damage. Earthshaker, Morphling, Leshrac. That is not, like, heroes that focus on long sustained team fights so much. They just want to be able to burst somebody down. That AM's not going to drop bottom lane. Look at the jump in from Zai with the illusions out from the Animage. They'll make short work of Chalice, who's had a rough go of it. And oh. now X Nova's dead as well. Zai cancels his TP, realizing that support could not handle the illusions. Maybe he's going to try and go for Zai here, but he's even nice with the illusions no. as well. No. Oh my god. god. LGD, LGD. What's happening? Don't, 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 don't lose like this. Zai's just set up camp in the most obvious area of all time. And, uh, you know, like, uh, the sirens in the Odyssey. They're just kind of walking. They're just lured in. They're just... The song of the siren. They're beautiful. I mean, Zai's beautiful, so I, I understand Their mind it. goes blank. They're just nothing but this Swedish god. They just walk towards him. The sailors are dropping off one by one. I... <laughs> <laughs> What was that? that was like a disaster. Jeez. He sat inside the sandstorm. He's like, whoa. I didn't realize he was dying in like two seconds. He has the four right. sandstorm DPS. So his his 14 second faster battle fury is turned into a seven minute faster Scotty. The jump in the back line. Chalice is dead. Once again, FY has already been neutralized, controlled up by Yabsor. It just seems to get worse and worse. And now X Nova. Okay. He tried to go for the disarm on Denisha, but he actually turned it around on the Oracle so he could keep on swinging. The Fates Edict not here to save the Oracle today. Uh, I'm pretty sure Secret should just go for Roche. Game would look the exact same right now. Yeah. Uh -oh. Link Lincolns will help protect him, but not enough. There's so many Disables coming his way. Tell oh, Jesus it's enough to finish him off. And now Nisha jumps forward onto maybe as well. This game just turns out a dime so quickly. Secret go from biding their time to now dominating LGD inside of their own base underneath the tier fours. LGD has not had five heroes alive for the last two minutes. I can't believe that Everybody bottom Everybody keeps on getting picked off and dying. Would you guys, who would like to walk into the sandstorm next? That. <laughs> so at least we figured out uh, what team everyone's gonna flame. You know, uh, it was a back and forth affair game one, game two. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. One team is correct. History only cares about the winners, folks. That is what Dota has taught me. And right now that is about to be team secret. I mean, to be fair, there's a lot of room for flame here. LGD did not lose in the most graceful of ways, Blitz. They did not, Cap. That this was, was a fine game up until was, about five minutes ago. You that know? was crazy. I just saw like four people walk into a sandstorm and just pass. Oh, man, he's going to go for it. Trying to kill Puppy. Doesn't actually have enough burst damage. Now, Telekinesis is out of mana. False promise goes down. That's why Nisha immediately just <laughs> turns back. Up Nova. He blocks back the spell to stun Ame with his own shotgun. And now, Nisha is going to try and run him down there. He's going to be stunned from the left rack to make sure that Ame gets home safely. He did have a mana void up for Nisha, but did and not want to blink forward and throw the game instead wants to finish off the second lane of Rex. and this is all without the uh the aegis this is when you know you're ahead yeah when tier one teams are playing against each other and everyone just forgoes roshan and no one cares about it whatsoever that's how you know that the game is largely wrapped up the decisive victory secret just recognized that lgd made one too many mistakes and decided to quickly end it or at least force it to uh, a pretty inevitable conclusion. As two lanes of racks down, it's going to be very hard for LGD to come back from this 22,000 net worth deficit. A fresh BKB on mid one, plenty of items that's going to be flowing in for Team Secret, including that aforementioned Aegis. They're finally going to get it now, and I feel like this is more of an afterthought. Like, ah, well, yeah, the game's over. Yes, we have to. Well, let's just kind of do this. Lincoln's for the AM, mid one hopping around in trees, just making sure that no one from LGD 
is going to dive into the pit and upset the current balance. Fisher, mid one, Echo Slam as well. He does get picked off, and they also find the Absorch Chalice. Not feeling too confident about that. It's a hurt the Roshan go down. They're going to try and retreat, but Chalice is not going to be so lucky. The Yule Scepter from Zai able to stop him for a strike to make sure AM has his way. Zai, by the way, for Chalice. He's building a nullifier. Just makes everybody's life harder. Yeah. Aside from maybe like ex Novas who, you know, it'll prevent him from using his wand. This is where you see the real, the desperation plays of, of really good teams is when you have somebody just waiting to cut the creep wave because you know you can't stop the enemy if they five man into that last. Oh, yeah. For the, fi the straight up five on five, it's just done. Yeah. By the way, absolute uh, special shout out to Zai this game. Five, zero, and 16. Oh, yeah. That pickoff that he got on. Uh, <laughs> on Ame bottom, I don't know if I want to call that a pick off. He just kind of stunned and right clicked him once. And the. He just casted his spells. The Sandstorm Trap. I mean, apparently it's got some weird magnetic pull where everybody just wants to walk into it. But Remember they did. Remember when Sand King, when it was channeling and he did that little dance? Yeah. It was like Zai himself was doing a dance to lure he out. Just swayed them in with his yeah. hips. <laughs> Those hips don't lie, man. <laughs> they don't. I mean, how JD walked in one by one. They felt it. Uh, this game, I don't know. There's just not a whole lot that you can do as LGD because you can't straight up fight them. And Fly tried to cut the creep wave, and he did for the most part. One little creep limps on, but there's nobody else to be able to collect the follow-up creep wave. I straight up thought that Yapsor was going to deny that creep for CS, like for gold. That'd be the most Yapsor thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Instead of getting into Instead break of getting into the, the break, the back to protection. Mid lane's also pushing in, so Secret can easily go high ground any other way. Level 25 on Nisha as well. He got the Lincolns, by the way, so that uh, you can't just steal the... You can't just run out. Oh, immediately, Burrow Strike, Nullifier oh, onto the last track. He's going to be in trouble. Mid one takes that time to get off the Wukong Command. Fortunately, there was a small little gap where Leshrak was able to get out of that Wukong Command. Fisher block in. Oh, back line immediately. The AM tries to go for the Oracle. Doesn't actually get it. The epicenter jump in from Zai. Big amount of burst damage. That'll be enough to finish off the Morphling as well as go to the back line and grab Chalice. Nobody has buyback here on the side of LGD, so it's just FY and maybe. Oh, mid one's dancing on him. Just watch. He's mid dancing on him. Styling on PSG LGD. That's a different kind of dance. There, That is not an entrancing one. Look at that. The that he, he's pinging himself. One. He wants his team to know <laughs> what's going on. What a way to end the game. LGD, they did manage to push it to a game three. They won that game two pretty cleanly. But this game three was only sloppy by them. And Secret, I mean, it was good performance by them. They capitalized on the mistakes 